Hi everyone, in this series we are going to introduce symbolic calculations in Python. Essentially, we provide an overview of the SymPy library. Initially, we were thinking of covering everything in one video, but then everyone is not going to be on the same page, so we decided to split the coverage in a series of videos so that you can practice in between. So please do practice between the videos. The purpose of this video is just to introduce the environment and set up the variables. As you would know, there are quite a few ways to access Python. So if you have access to a machine, so we recommend you install Anaconda. It brings everything together in one place and also allows for keeping things up to date in a relatively controlled way. So Anaconda is the way to go. But if you don't have access to Anaconda, then there shouldn't be a showstopper because you can try the code you're going to see here in a live portal that we're going to see in a bit. Now, if you have installed Anaconda, then going to the page where you can type in Python code is very easy. All you have to do is to type Jupyter Notebook and it will take you to this notebook, which looks more like a collection of folders and will certainly grow as you write more code. But for now, we are interested in trying out new code. So let's zoom in on new and then select Python. And it will take you to this window. So this is your window to the codes of Python. You can express your commands here and they will execute them for you as long as you write them in the language that they understand. Now we don't need the functionalities at the top. So let's remove the clutter and fill the screen. Now, of course, we want to import the library so we can start to play. So it's very easy. We want to import SymPy. So you just type in import SymPy and we will import it with the alias SP. Now, every functionality we use from this library, we will have to prefix it by SP dot, which is inconvenient, but provides for more clarity because you know what functionality are you using from what library, which is handy, especially when you're using multiple packages. You don't have to use the alias though. Now this will import everything into your global namespace and you can use them like you own them, though this is not the recommended approach. Alternatively, you can type in from SymPy, import everything. And if you're interested in using only a subset of the functionalities, then you can replace the asterisk with the list of those functions. Right, so let's run the statement to let the gods know our wish. Now in the basic programming language, you define the variables and then you play with them. Say a equal to 10, b equal to 19, and then you write some compound expression of these variables, say c equal to a times 3 plus 4 times b. Now if you run these statements, and then check the value of C, then you will see that the computer has substituted for A and B and has produced the resulting value of C. Now, in symbolic calculations, our aims are slightly bigger. Of course, we will sometimes substitute the numeric values for the symbols to evaluate the value of the expression for certain values of the inputs, but sometimes our aims could be bigger, like we want to calculate the derivative of the expression or integrate it over a certain region. So we need to define the symbols. To define the symbols, say x, y, and z, you can use the symbols function from the SymPy library. So we just type in x, y, z, and then run. Now, if you write an expression, say y equal to x to the power two plus one, and then run, and then check the value of y, you see the y now stores x to the power 2 plus 1. This x asterisk 2 really represents the x to the power 2, by the way. This is how you would have seen it in mathematics. Now, in many equations, in addition to the Latin letters, you also see the Greek symbol. So let's say we want to add alpha and beta to the list. So no problem. You just type them on both sides. Now, if you check the value of alpha, you see the system has stored it the way we have written it. But now if you write this function, which is the init underscore printing. 
so it enables the fancy printing and then check the value of alpha. You will see it outputs it now in the way the Greek should write it. And now if we rerun our expression and then check the value of y, you see it's been written in the way the mathematician would write it, so all good. And you can check beta for completeness as well. Now this way of defining the variables make you write the x, y, z on both sides of the equality, which sounds a bit strange, but of course, the left hand side is how you would reference these variables in the code and the right hand side is how the computer stores and interprets them. If you are in a hurry, now SymPy actually stores the Latin and Greek symbols in a module called ABC, so you can import the symbols you need from this module if you like. Or you can use the refer function var, which is for variable, to define the variable. Now these things could be handy if you're using say the live portal, but we recommend that you stick to the symbols because it allows for more control over the way you define the variables. For example, we might want the variables i, j and k to represent integers. So all you have to do is to put a comma and then type in integer equal to true. Now if you check the properties of one of the variables, say i, which you can do by just kind of putting a dot and then assumption 0, this is where it stores the properties, then you can see the integer is true. And if you want the variables to take on positive values, then you can add the second condition and put positive equal to true. And now if you check, you can see the positive is true. Oh, sorry, I've mistyped the integer. See, the compiler didn't flag it, so this is sometimes the issue with these kind of new softwares. Now what we can do, the original variables we define, so we can make them real. And now if you check the properties of one of them, say z, you see it's both complex and real, but the imaginary part is missing, so I suppose these represent the same thing. Now if you are in a hurry and you don't want to import and then define the variables etc, so there is a built-in function you can use, init underscore session. So if you run this, so you can see it's imported the library, it's defined general variables x, y, z and t, and then it has defined integer variables and then some symbolic functions as well and then it has enabled the pretty printing as well. So you can start straight away. Now, we mentioned the live portal earlier. So let's go to Google and type in SymPy Live. And then go to SymPy Live. So you can see, so it's imported the library and defined the necessary variables. So we are ready to go. So let's define a variable as y equal to x raised to the integer power n plus some symbolic functions of x. Now if you check the value of y, you can see it's defined as x to the power n plus function of x. We're going to be using the Jupyter notebook here though, so let's switch to the Jupyter notebook. Now let's get rid of the clutter. And let's say we define an expression as y equal to x plus x plus z plus 3 times z. Now if you check the value of y, you can see the computer is actually storing it in a slightly different way. So it has combined the x's and z, which is what you would expect because the two are equivalent. 
Now if you try a slightly different expression, say alpha times x to the power 3, plus 3 times x to the same power, and then run, and then check the value of y, you can see it hasn't combined the coefficients of x to the power 3. But now if you try the simplify function from the SymPy library, and then run, then in this case you see it has combined the coefficients of x to the power 3. Now simplify is a subjective thing, so it depends really on the context. So sometimes you might want to collect the powers of the variable and in other times you might want to combine the ratio. So there are specialized functions for these things and those are the functions you should be using. And this is what we're going to cover in the next video. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next.